Can you hear Hello? me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. How you doing? Good and good. Do you know you're on stream right now? No, no, I, I don't know I'm on stream, but I want to ask you a question. Okay, should I mute, mute you? No, you, can, you don't have to mute me. You can do whatever. What's up? It's not, a, it's not a personal thing. Okay, what's going on? You're, you're, you're the person I know in my circle who's like a kink expert. So Ooh, like tell me, ask me, what is it? Yeah, this is your wheelhouse. So I was going to ask you, uh, so we were housing this Discord and everyone's talking about it. But how familiar are you with breeding kinks? Oh, I mean, yeah, pretty familiar. I got a little bit of it myself. Okay, <laughs> Todd, well, you're, 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 at, you're at the baby making phase. I think you got married, right? Yeah, well, I'm getting married. But yeah, like, or definitely we play around with that. But I got birth control. So we just, it's just a fantasy right hey, now. Hey, listen, nobody judge. You can have a baby whenever you want. During the, <laughs> the, 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 during the honeymoon, before the honeymoon, before you get married, whatever. You get married. <laughs> nobody judges you. You don't have to tell us about the birth control. But, so so tell, me, tell me about breeding kinks. How do they function? Um, well, depending on how you do it, it can come from a lot of places. Um, it's not the sexual, a lot of people confuse breeding kinks as like a sexual desire in relation to the baby, but it's not. It's in relation to the filling someone up, making someone produce something of themselves, being like either the bottom or the top, depending on who's being bred. But it's about being like, you know, either a good specimen for breeding, like, oh, you're, you know, you're submissive and breedable. You're perfect. You're such a great specimen. I'm going to breed you. It's almost like a weird twisted compliment, but it comes from a place of either humiliation and or praise. So the irony of it is that you can either be in a breeding fetish to be praised or to be humiliated. You're just livestock. Go ahead. What would that look like? What would that look like? Yeah. So if they were being humiliated. Well, How would you be like, you're not even fit enough to have my babies, you dirty little. Yeah, it can be one of, yeah, so kind of. <laughs> I'm sorry. That just sounds funny. Yeah. Yeah. You want these babies? You didn't earn them, bitch, because you haven't yet. Yeah. Actually, kind of. It could be, it could be that. It could be like, man, you need to work out more. You need to be someone I can breed. You're not even ready to have my baby. Or it can be oh, like, wow. it can be like if the top, let's say the top is a girl and the bottom is the guy. You could be like, you want me to use your sperm? Your sperm? I bet they don't even swim fast. You want me to breed you? You better become better, like good enough for me to breed you, right? So it's like, <laughs> you're almost like humiliated. Like, is your penis even long enough to reach my cervix? If you come inside me, will it even reach it? Like, there's a lot there. And it's like, if you're so good, breed me. If you're such a man, you better get me pregnant. It's like, there's some Something about it that like motivates a person to fuck harder that's really hot okay yeah okay that is wild i've never heard it from the female's perspective i've only seen it in a porno once from the male perspective i've never heard it the other way around yeah i like i like personally i like the idea of being like i'm gonna get you pregnant and i'm gonna keep you and we're gonna like you know, you're going to raise my babies. There's something hot about the <laughs> fantasy. There is something hot about the fantasy. But in real life, like in real life, it's like, okay, cut that shit out, bro. But like in, yeah, yeah. in bed, oh, anything goes in bed, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is a, the, 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 me hearing people discussing it. I'm having a big old laugh. I think it kind of just probably falls into what we're prime, like, yeah. Prime break, right? Yeah. Like the whole idea of reproducing, like women do get the strong urge to want to like, you know, having baby fever or whatever. Oh my God. Yeah. This might tap into that. I imagine when so. I hit 30. Oh my God. I told my guy when I hit 30, my former guy, I'm with a new guy now, but when I hit 30, I looked at him, I was like, fuck. And he goes, what? And I was like, we got to get major good birth control because like, I don't even think I can have an abortion at this point. I'm so like my biological clock hits so hard. The fantasies yeah. got even hotter and bigger and stronger. And I was like, <gasps> like, I'm going to actually get pregnant because I'm so into this. Like I might even beat my birth control. <laughs> like I might like Yo. be stronger. That's how much I, yeah, it's, it's, it's hot though. Like there's something really sexy about being like, um, taken, but being like, yeah. also be, like, you're so good. You're worthy okay. of being bred. Okay. Yeah. But is that really a kink? Okay. Let me ask you mm. this. So, okay, maybe you can help me. So, first part. Okay. Well, this is two parts. First part, you'd be surprised, but I think this also applies to dudes. Because I remember mm -hmm. when I hit 30, yeah. all of a sudden, cream pie seemed so much more appealing. Ooh, Girls would yeah, say yeah. stuff like, come inside me. And I was just like, I guess I'm staying. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. it changed as a result of me hitting. I felt like there was a shift. For there. sure. Um, For sure. Well, okay, do you know what primal play is? No, no. What's that? So, primal play is hitting those primal parts of our, our like, 
sort of our evolutionary instinctual monkey brains. So we're basically mm-hmm. saying like, I'm the bear, I'm the lion, I'm the tiger. I'm going to dominate you. I'm going to ruthlessly take you like evolution intended oh, yeah. or the yeah, opposite. Yeah. I'm going to run from you and you're going to prove your manliness by chasing me down and catching mm-hmm. me as prey. Um, sure, sure, there sure. were BDSM events that my friends would hold where half of the group would be prey and half the group would be predator. And then we'd mm-hmm. run into a forest and then we'd get chased. And then whoever caught who would drag them back to camp and then like tie them up in ropes and like, you know, to put them on display for everyone to see, like, look, I caught my prey. There's something really satisfying about it. It's like super nerdy, but also super yeah. sexy. It definitely. Uh, I'm not, not going to lie. This just sounds like the nerd version of rape play. It is the nerd version of everything, girl. Like it is just like nerds hanging out, spending their money. Like BDSM is expensive. Like it is one of the most right. expensive hobbies I've ever had in my life. And um, yeah. totally worth it. Like it definitely hits home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. the second thing I was going to say in regards to the whole breeding thing, where was I going with this? We, okay. Just before this week, you were talking about, um, hitting 30 and then one, Oh, uh, and I said, I talked about how women can just say something that all of a sudden, even as a guy it changes. Mm. Oh, okay. Yes. Got it. This is what I want to ask you. Okay. <laughs> so how do you know when something's a kink versus something just a turn on? And the reason why I'm saying this is if, if a woman came to me just in day to day life, she says, I think you'd be a great father for my babies. I would find that sexy. Yeah. I would find that deep, right? Yeah. At what point does that go from being a kink to just being like, oh, this is something I like? How do you know the difference? Okay, so I'm going to give you textbook definitions. So we're on the same page there and then we can deviate. Yeah. So textbook yeah. definitions are kinks are something that turn you on while fetishes are something you need to come. Um, so, okay. I yeah. think I think that I think that distinction is very good. That makes yeah. Sense. A lot of people think because you know how foot fetishes are so popular, and it, it, it's mm-hmm. one of the most popular ones. A lot of people got a foot kink. Not everyone has a foot fetish. It's actually pretty rare to have a fetish in general because it's usually yeah. very specific to the way your brain is constructed or works. Okay. So a mm. kink, everyone has a thing that turns them on. Like I personally, like I need certain things to happen in a kinky sense for me to get like wet enough but uh-huh. i don't have a fetish because it's not going to stop me from coming whether i get it or not but yeah. it, it would definitely help you know what i'm saying it would help so i think that that's the distinction that people need to pay attention to but then there's a third category that i think you might be alluding to so tell me if this is true where there yeah. are just women who neither have a kink nor a fetish but are actually just like turned on by the idea of someone being a good father or a man being turned on by the idea of a woman thinking they'd be a good father wait if they're turned on isn't that inherently a kink? well do you be- mean mentally turned on like oh he would make a good like a good husband for me or do you mean like i'm literally yeah. dripping down my thigh well look like, well, I- I don't know how much like, okay, I'm pretty confident that if I did some dirty talking, okay, like I was like, oh, I really want you or whatever, that would turn on somebody. At what point does those turn on those words become a kink? That's what I'm, I guess I'm having a hard time telling the difference. I think the consistency in which you operate within them. So if like it was a one time thing, but if it's something like you guys do often or repeatedly, I'd say that was a kink, right? Like. I like my kinks. I want my hair pulled. I want my booty slapped. I want to be told like I'm possessed, like they're possessive. Booty slapping kink? Like is that a thing? Oh, I I do. I like the pain. I like the way it feels. It's so like, it's so like as a top girl who likes to be bottom, it's a Uh really nice position to be in. Over a lap, being spanked. Like there's something. Nobody would say that though. Nobody would say you have a booty slapping kink. Like nobody says that. I think they reserve kink for like more like off meta um, you know he, he, how how wrong? many well how many times do you get spanked right is the question so i would want it like every time and I, harder. most women i know want to have their ass smacked pretty much every time y'all. really most. okay yeah. so you're not because like most of the girls i know think i'm crazy for that and i'm like really yeah. but like maybe it's just different what i would call bubbles <laughs> maybe it's just different worlds so mm. yeah so maybe that's it so maybe for some people it's just a part of the expectation and for other people yeah. it's something they add into it on purpose with thought okay mm-hmm. that's how i think i would ask about it yeah because like i definitely okay. i definitely tried to keep my i don't have any fetishes personally i just have a lot of kinks like things that like would get me turned on way faster than other things that i'm like hey if you want to go straight to it like pff, do this and i'm ready before you take off my underwear you know what got i mean you, got you, got you. yeah okay. yeah okay cool that helps Are me out you... i've heard the words kink and fetish used so often and i'm like well 
Yeah. How can you even tell? What's yeah. the difference between these two terms? Like, what what do they actually mean? I feel like people use them interchangeably. Well, like, oh. they do. They really do. And next time you're on Flagrant, ask Andrew, does he have a foot fetish or foot kink? Oh, no, man. Andrew's always trolling and, like, being goofy. So <laughs> I, I, I rarely take what he says when he's trying to be funny. Seriously. Okay, that's a, probably a good point. That's another thing, too. Like, I can't tell if this man really likes feet or not. But if he does, yeah, I'd probably yeah, say yeah. it's probably a kink more than a fetish. I have a feeling. Yeah, yeah. Listen, when he's on the pod, he's performing. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. So, so that's why. That's, are that's, you that's um are you dabbling in kink stuff right now? Is that what's going on? Not at all. Not oh. at all. Like, I don't know. I encounter this kind of stuff on a regular basis. I just, yeah. I'm not part of the world. So I don't learn the lingo, nor do yeah. I really care about it. You know, I will say right? this, like, you would make a really good father. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're being stupid right now. <laughs> I'm being stupid. I am, I am. You know what? If it wasn't in the context of this conversation, this wouldn't be wild. But in this conversation, this is a wild thing to say. I'm just saying, obviously, I'm getting married, obviously, and it's not to ABBA. But I'm just saying, like, there is, there. is, you're right. Like, that is, like, that is nice to hear, right? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, all right. <laughs> Hey, listen, listen. We're, we're gonna move past that one. That was that was that was okay. wild. That was I wild. know. Was I'm wild. a wild girl. That's why we're friends, right? Uh, okay. Yeah, no, no. It's, just, it's funny because I, I'll encounter stuff, and then people tell me later, like, "Oh, that's kinky or that's weird." That's yeah, I, yeah. I really don't think that. Just like I don't, know, I don't think, I don't think that stuff is that extreme. I've, I've encountered a few extreme things, but I certainly don't think like I remember like if girls ask me like, "Oh, spit in my mouth." Like apparently yeah. to some people that's super kinky. Totally. To me, to me, I'm like, eh, it's just like, eh, it's just like a minor thing. It doesn't seem that big. I feel oh, like, what? You know, hold, hold, and I'll explain why. I feel like for me, if I think of fetish or kinks, I think of like peculiar stuff. I think oh, of like yeah. coming on women's feet. I think of stuff yeah, like, yeah. Uh, you know, let me come in your hair. Like, or or if like a woman says like, uh, I want you to like lick my armpit hair. That's like more extreme stuff that I find. Okay, that's kinky. That's very niche yeah. or whatever. Um, but stuff like. Spank my ass, like I would just, I would not consider that a kink normally. But I guess that's just, I don't know the. You know, it depends know. on your background, right? Because like, if you go to these ultra Mormon towns, they're not even doing anything, right? So I think it just depends on the, because the spin my mouth thing is definitely one of those things a lot of people love the fantasy of. But like yeah. the people who really like it, I mean, that's kind of like a very interesting niche person, right? Like I think that's kind I of unique. Domination. I think it's just the extension of domination. Abs, one hundred percent. No, 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 one hundred. Like a lot of that stuff was like. Well, Maybe the sensation of being smacked in the face feels good. Yeah. But when I think of like a lot of these things, I, I just think it's just it's just the next step. If you're into being dominated, yeah. Then that's just like how much further can he take it? Like I want Absolutely. to grab my and be rough. Obviously, they don't want you to actually hurt them. The reason why they want that is they just want to feel like you're on that edge of dominating them completely. So uh, spitting in the mouth is just like an other level of that. I'll take it even further. I'll say like if you go to like literatica.com or you read like fantasy stories of like teachers and students, it's just the power dynamic. Nobody actually fucking wants to fuck a high schooler, right? But it's the dynamic. It's like, ooh, I'm young and innocent and someone's going to – that's why 40-year-olds have these fantasies. Even though nobody is a teenager, everyone yeah. wants to be innocent at some point in their life as they age they want to be treated like i'm special and new again so i would say like even most of our fantasies you're right are is about dominance and submission it's about the desire to be wanted and taken and the desire to be you know respected and understood and like there's something here but yeah i think that most of our fantasies are about power dynamics. that dynamic interests me like i mm. i find like from the woman's perspective sometimes like I'll, the, the whole dominant that want to be dominated aspect comes up often mm -hmm. and then from the man's perspective it like i see a lot of dudes talk about like Oh, she let me do this. So that's the novelty of like, how far did she let you go? So exactly. I, I think there's certain things that I, I, I've i done before that I don't find interesting. Mm -hmm. But I think the reason why other folks find it appealing is just like, she let me go that far. Does that make sense? Well, yeah. So well, I, think about I, the trust. I personally don't think, I, I don't think coming on a girl's face feels good. Okay. Like it's ah, just, okay. If I come on a shoulder, to me, it's like the exact same thing personally. Mm. I, but I think mentally, the appeal is she let me come on her face. Totally. Which is like, that's the, her, you know what I mean? That's her, this, oh, that's her right? So that it's that mental aspect of like how far she let me go, and I don't know. For me, that just does. That's not the kind of stuff that turns me on. So I just don't engage in it. Oh yeah, but, no, um, like. I definitely have like things I've let people do to me because it's not the thing that I like. It's not yeah. like I like being peed on technically, but I like the dominance of like, I'm peeing on you. Like, which yeah. sounds very like forward, but like, yeah, I've definitely done water sports. And like, it is one of those things where like, I don't even like the pee, it's gross. But yeah. I kind of like that I trust this person enough to kind of be gross with me. But that's my right. past self. I don't know about my current self. So like, yeah. that's Shout something. Yeah. That's a soldier. I'm not gonna lie. I'll be honest with you. 
if I met a woman and she required me to pee on her, I could not date her. Yeah, that makes sense. Like that's okay, but that's the thing. That's why your kinks have to be complimentary too. Or like mm-hmm. why you want the kink. Like I definitely want to feel taken, but I don't want to feel disrespected. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, that's your that's you. Some other people are like I want to be disrespected. Yeah, well, totally. they don't see the disrespect because they consent. So Absolutely. for them, what they like, as long as they like they're into it, like for them, it's not disrespectful. But you're right. I like a yeah. humiliation kink that's been negotiated, of course, but afterwards you better fucking hug me and remind me that I'm a person and you all those mean things you said to me during that scene, you don't mean. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. you better tell me after. That's why aftercare is so important. It's to remind your partner that, like, hey, I don't actually think you're a dumb cunt. <laughs> 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 I don't, I, I, I just, I, I see some of this stuff, like, I just think it's funny. I just, I would never say that. Like, yeah. I, I don't, I, I, yeah, you're a dumb little whore. You like my dick. Yeah, like, I'm like, you know what? You can say that. I just, it, it makes me kind of cringe on the inside. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, if the kink yeah. doesn't but fit get, you, it's going to be weird. Like I, I see people all the time with kinks where I'm like, I don't know about that, but then it's just me not knowing it. Cause I'm not in it. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Here's an interesting one. And I was, I was having this conversation with somebody else. Like, I've known women who like being dominated. They'll like stuff like spitting in their mouth yep. or like slapping the face. Oh, yeah. But I remember one time this one girl, she wanted me to do all this stuff. So I was like, if yeah, that's what you want, like, I, I'm a pretty giving person. I want people to be pleased. So if that's what they want, I'll do it. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't turn me on, but I'm like, whatever. Like, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah I like but, that. Mm-hmm. Um, But then I tried like spitting on her pussy and she freaked out. I was like, what? Really? Why? And, uh, and she's like, I don't like that. Don't do that. And that's her boundary. So I respect cool, cool, it. Cool. Mm-hmm. thinking about it i'm like let me spit in your mouth and on and like i could have spat on your face i could smack your face but like why is that and um i think what i suspected and, and maybe you can help me i think there's a lot of people who still feel like a lot of um shame around whatever kinks that they have oh yeah and so they can rationalize certain points because mm-hmm. they've gone through it and they've normalized it. So it's good, but there's still a lot of that shame around it or like, like, mm. so some things they've made off limits with like no logical consistency, which you don't have to have. Yeah. Uh, but if you just think about it, like it's really stupid to be like, you can spit in this hole, but not that one. Like what? Okay. You know, you're right though. It's connected to something and just one little thing can make it like, Ooh, this was hot and now it's ruined. Like, okay. I'll tell you this though. People also, um amplify the fantasy and then when they really do it they're like oh damn like okay i thought this is gonna sound so stupid when i was like a submissive and i had this like top boyfriend or a dominant boyfriend i was like yo you want to try like soap bars in the mouth and being punished and he's like why and i was like i saw it on tumblr and it looked really hot and so we did it and i just vomited and i was like that was the worst thing i ever have done ever like i am not turned on but it was like a good learning experience i think the Hold fant- on, did, I, did i hear you correctly did you say soap yeah like a soap bar you know when you're being punished and they put a soap bar in your mouth no no i heard okay this is this stems from hey, I, I i like my part but i wouldn't even try that but that, that, hey listen I, I, I try i try as much as i'm uh, open to it's kind of my and, rule and, and someone just sent me a message they said abba you're so vanilla and i thought that was funny I, I don't know why but i think people really like champion having all these kinks and like extreme proclivities i think it's cool if people have them like enjoying their life but i think people made it this personality thing where they think they're superior because they like more extreme stuff or they're totally like, doing all this other stuff like yeah you're not better you no like weird stuff which is fine there's nothing wrong with it but i think they they talk like they're above others on a sexual level i met so many women who had all these crazy extreme kinks and all this stuff but in terms of like actual basics of sex in terms of foreplay yeah. and good yeah. like they weren't necessarily great they just mm-hmm. had extreme stuff that they like so that's a that's a cringe thing that some people do within the sex game where they're like i like weird stuff so i'm really cool it's like uh, I don't know. It makes me cringe a little bit when I hear people talk. No, I agree. I, I knew a guy who in LA was going out with this girl on Tinder or whatever, and they're having sex. And she's like, spank me, daddy. And so he like kind of spanks her a little bit on the booty, whatever. She goes, slap me or you're a bitch. And he was like, whoa. Okay. Like on the face. And she was like, yes. And he was like, she, he was, he's like older and millennial. And he was like, well, I don't know you and no offense. Like we're in the me too era. So I don't really want to slap you in the face. And she was like, wow, you're such a bitch. And then she like got up and left. And I was like, 
girl, he just met you on an online app. You can't ask men to be out here assaulting you. Because actually, do you know that BDSM is often a nonprofit organized, like BDSM dungeons are often nonprofit sex education centers because in the US, spitting on someone can be prosecuted as assault. So you yeah. have to be very careful about who you're doing kinky shit with, even something that you think is normal, because a girl or a boy could turn around tomorrow and be like, I've been assaulted. And like, yeah. that sucks. I mean, I've definitely come home with bruises. I'm definitely very cautious of my partners. I want to protect them. I want to, yeah. you know, no matter how much I say it was consensual, the world is just going to see it how they're going to see it, right? Yeah. Okay. You know how people watch porn, they just do a bunch of extreme stuff? Yeah. They'll just like, fuck like gorilla because they think, I think people have taken the same approach to kinks to some degree. Totally. Like, I, I know people who don't even know how to touch somebody. Well, yeah. Or like how to listen to their body or how to yeah. kiss them well. Or to just like understand like physical touch and like you, this is like a, a cheat that it's a lot of people don't be like you ever you ever been sleeping with a dude and he's like holding on to your stomach while he's fucking you? Yeah. How good does that feel? Pretty good. Right. Yeah. Right. That's like a my thing. But I remember like it happens so often where if I'm sleeping with somebody, I'll do that. And they're like, yeah. But these are people who have all these crazy kinks and stuff like that. But even like just basic physical touch is like absent from their sex life in terms of like being really good or feeling really well. And so I don't know. I just think it's cool to have all these kind of things and if you're into them that's fine but what makes sex generally good for a lot of people or like consistently good is just understanding like the minor things which when it comes down to like physical intimacy not necessarily always extreme stuff if that makes sense yeah honestly i think i even fell into that trap if i'm being honest with you i think the person i'm with now who is my forever committed partner like he is the first man or, or person i should say because i've been with women as well the first person i've been with that I genuinely feel like I can, ugh, not to sound like so old school, but like I can make love with. Like yeah. he's the first man I can slow down with. He's the first man huh? I can just like be with versus yeah. in my past life. To be honest, I think the kinks were sort of like a distraction sometimes because I didn't know how to slow down. I didn't know how to trust people. I'd rather people slap me across the face than look at me lovingly. So I yeah. think I fell into that trap. And that's why I think, think I'm so grateful that I found a human that I – want to feel slow with because it is mm -hmm. it is the greatest feeling and it's just the greatest thing ever and yeah i just didn't know the value of it until i had it to be honest i i think one of the things that i thought was so underrated i remember one woman she had like she had maybe the greatest um sense of touch i've ever seen like, just, mm. like uh, there's touching people and there's like applying pressure between like your fingertips to like really dig through the skin like nicely yeah. not like in a rough way but just really touch properly and there's like levels to these kinds of things and I think it's interesting that whenever I'm out there, people talk about like, oh, I'm so kinky. I, mm -hmm. I got like this and that and all this stuff. But you rarely hear people say like, I'm I'm really good at touching folks or like, I'm yeah. I got a good. These are like things that feel amazing consistently. Uh, and I feel like I'd never hear people discuss them, but they're always ready to discuss the extreme proclivities. And so I just, I don't know, when I think about sexual discourse, it's rarely about the stuff that I think generally makes it good consistently. And it's more so just focused always on the kinks. And, yeah, uh, there is um there is one subcategory of kink that I think people should know about, and that is sensual kink. And so there are people who, quote unquote, become masters in sensuality, but mm. it's very intimate. And so it's hard to do it with strangers. It's far less intimate to have a man slap you than to have yes. a man slowly touch you. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a great point. It, is, yeah. it does feel intimate. And it's, yeah, it does... It does make you look at the person differently when you. Yeah, yeah, and then the problem yeah. is it makes the person feel far more disposable when you're like you're a little fucking whore. Like I don't know, totally. I just I would have a hard time talking to my girlfriend that way consistently, but I, I could like if it was necessary. But I was just like I don't know, like for me, yeah. I, like I, I prefer probably the more making love aspect to it if I if I like the girl. I, I think that makes sense. I think ultimately we want to make sure that a majority of our time together is sweet and loving and like. I think beautiful, like less so than crude and violent and kinky, but there's nothing wrong with adding that in appropriately, obviously. Mm. But yeah, even in my own relationship, I will say like the intimacy is so much better. And it's like I said, it's just nothing I've ever experienced. And so I'm not, I'm not trying to talk shit on my past partners. That was the relationships we had. That's how we did it. I felt like, you know, at times it was really good at times. It wasn't so great, but I think the element that was missing was like the ability to feel safe enough to be intimate mm. enough and to slow down enough. And I think um, that that's, yeah, missing. Go ahead. I think the most popular porn category for Lisa is not lesbian porn. Yeah, it is. I think it is as far as I know, too. And okay. it's same. Like, I, that's all I it, watch, it, hentai on. and lesbian. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty confident that lesbian porn is pretty fucking vanilla vast majority of the time. It is. Absolutely. Okay. And it's sensual as hell. The way they okay. eat that okay. pussy okay. So is let, like. Mm. Let's take that in for a second. Yeah. Okay. I think this is like, this is probably one of the key points. And I, and I, and I, and I think I, I think because one thing. 
So, okay, uh, we'll, we'll, I'll get to that one after. Let me just type it. So if I don't type it, I forget. I got to trash. Oh, okay. So you're not typing to me. You're just typing in general? Yeah, 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 because I know okay. I'll forget this. Okay, okay. Uh, people do. Okay. Um, one thing you can take away, I think, just knowing that, like, the vast majority of women like lesbian porn is, like, they like the aspect of them taking so much time with the foreplay. They're really paying attention to each <laughs> other's body type. You notice, I remember just paying attention to what women did either to me or to other women. Mm. They, they'll take a lot of time, like even kissing up the torso, yeah. going to different body parts. Like there's so much going there. Even before they even go to like finger or anything like that, they're doing so much of just discovering on the body itself. Um, and I think it's interesting that women constantly tune into that because it relates to me that like, fantasy wise they're really looking at that am i wrong or am i no i i think you're right i think there's parts of that that appeal to women that i think men miss out on because like even like the way they eat girls out like oh, mm. hold on abba i have a stupid alarm going off let me turn it off real quick Sorry, yeah oh my god i had like a dumb alarm set and i don't know why hold on i gotta get back in my chair hold up hold up hold up hold up um hold up hold up you're not in my ears hold up okay i'm sorry i'm back um but yeah i think like even the way like girls eat each other out on cam like i wish mm. guys like had eaten me out like that over the years and i'm gonna be real like <laughs> my guy is really great but he's probably the first partner i've had where i'm like oh my god do you watch lesbian porn <laughs> like oh, yeah. it's really good and so like mm. i don't know but the sensuality is a big part of it yeah yeah um and so, yeah, there was a changing point. Like, I don't know what it was for you that made you improve drastically. I remember I was, I was probably pretty trash at sex until, like, I was, like, 25. And then I remember having one partner who just, like, you ever have a partner who does everything amazing for you? And you know, mm. like, even though they say you make them feel good, you're like, there's no way I'm doing half what you do. Like, the, yeah. you are going above and beyond the blank. Like, like, yeah. like you're a full-service hotel. I'm running a motel. I'm running the Holiday Inn. <laughs> okay? like, this is not even a comp. I'm, not, like, I'm very open about the fact that she was far superior than me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but just rather than, like, staying in that, I started just to observe what she did. And, and this is something I've learned over time, is that people do to others what they often, like, done to themselves. Ah, oh, good point, good point, good point. It's very rare that a girl's, like, nibbled inside my ear or whatever, and I did it to her. She's like, oh, I hate that shit. Like, that, that. That's pretty much mm. you know, what I say never happened for me. And so and just paying attention to what she would do to me and then in repeating that back to her over time, like, like she would have all these adverse reactions or reactions that I'd never seen her do before. And Interesting. that kind of opened up my mind and to realize like, okay, oh, there's so much more I can do here in terms of making you feel good that doesn't rely on penetration whatsoever. Yeah. Just, you know, pay attention to what you're doing to me or then pay attention to your reactions as I'm like trying things out. And so that kind of helped me realize like I spent so much time after, after her on like foreplay and things like that, that um, it just kind of opened my mind. But then I think also that in like lesbian porn was like a good learning experience for me. Can I ask like, why do you care about being good at it? Um, because I just think it's kind. Like, I mean, the other day, like, I enjoy it and I feel good and I'm sharing that with you. So why wouldn't I want to make you feel good as well? For sure. You, but, okay, can I ask you a question? Because now that you've had interactions with them, I always get the impression from, like, the Fresh and Fit bubble that, like, they literally do not care about how the women feel. Is that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they've said that. I think it's like, um, I don't remember which one. Of the, yeah. Oh, yeah. He said, like, uh, I don't care if she comes. Like, it's not my problem. <laughs> See, like, I'm gonna get mine. Yeah, he said that. He said that. He said that. He said, I'm gonna get mine, and if you come as well, then like great. But if you don't, like it is what it is. So like, why do you think that even though you were a person who used to go on that show, why do you think <laughs> that you didn't end up a man who kept that? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, why aren't you like that? Uh, that's a lot. Destiny also goes on that show. Don't mean that. He that's true. <laughs> that's yeah, true. The way, the way you said that. The way you said that. You are a man who used to go on that show. Like I was rocking with everything. And, no, and no, no. You're cool. right. You're right. You're right. But what makes you okay, different? Right, like, what makes you right. different? All right. Um, I don't know. I think it's just the approach. The approach to sex and how you view people. Like, yeah. For me, it's not transactional. Like, I don't see it that way. Like, when I'm sleeping with somebody, I generally like the person, at least their behavior, how they act. Like. If you like somebody and you enjoy spending time with them, then you want to show them a good time. The only reason you wouldn't care about their pleasure is because you don't like them. Like, imagine having a guest over at your home and you don't care if they feel good in your place. Like, you don't pay that Good point. That's a great right? fucking point. So if I'm fucking you, like, why wouldn't I want to make sure you feel good? Like, that is a great fucking point, actually. My hospitality not, not like vibes, yeah. 
uh, for me, it's not even a complicated thing. It's just like, yeah, we're, we're sharing this together. Why wouldn't I take the time? Like, I'm not going to bend over backwards. You know, I'm not going to like buy the Hitachi 3000 just so I can make you come on Saturdays or whatever. But I'll make sure you can still enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, and that yeah. doesn't require like anything crazy. I don't think so. Yeah. I think you're a considerate person. Like, I think that that's a big part of it. And yeah. I don't think I think a lot of people think they're considerate, but they're really not. Or they can be sometimes. <laughs> But I think, yeah, I would describe this as consideration. Yeah, that's all it is. It's not, it's not like a, like, I don't even, here's the thing. So this sounds kind of crazy, but it's not, I don't think. I don't even care that deeply if she comes or not. And to me, it's like, it's like, I think sometimes dudes make like the focal point of their yeah. sexual baits to make her come. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. You could be like, I'm that dude. I made you come. Like, now you're shaking. But I'm just like, let's just find how this feels good. And then if we get there, we get there. And if we don't, that's okay. And we can try to work towards it later. But it's like, it doesn't have to be something that we make, like, super important. And, it, and the same goes for me. I've had sex with women sometimes where I didn't come. And I'm like, yeah. I'm not, it's not that deep. Like, it happens sometimes. And I still enjoyed it. You know what I mean? So we can keep it pushing. So, um, yeah, I think it's just thinking about the other person, trying to make sure it feels good for them, not making too much pressure to make sure, like, you reach a certain end goal. And then just try to enjoy it. I think that's, like, how I approach it anyways. I, I, well, I 100% agree, right? Because then what you're doing in that moment is you're really having a moment with a real person and you're thinking about them. Like I find, I agree, like in my relationship, I find like the intimacy is so amazing. Like, I don't know about you, but I've never had a partner I just like made out with. And now I have yeah. a partner where we make out and we watch anime and then we make out and we watch anime. And I'm like, this is the dream. Yeah. I'm like, whoa, I never knew cool. it could be so good. <laughs> Damn, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not aware of like what dudes are doing out there, but they set the bar so low. I'm not okay. That shit is easy. <laughs> I like making out. I like touching. I'm very like affectionate with anybody I'm involved with. So for me, I I just be doing stuff, and like girls be like, "Wow." Do you I, think I just, the bar I'm, is low? Like, or do you think we're, like you are doing something exceptional? Uh, I don't think I'm doing something. Uh, it's exceptional based off like the curve. I just don't think exceptional in terms of effort required Does that okay sense? i agree yeah i agree it's I, like well, if nobody throws out the trash nobody and then i'm the one person like that is exceptional. oh yeah 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 i got you but i don't think i'm doing anything i just took out the trash you know what i'm saying yeah no i think you're right then because i genuinely i've had like i've had like eight partners men and women and this mm -hmm. is the well sexual partners slash lovers slash boyfriends girlfriends but this is the first partner i've had that i genuinely like i always heard about it i always heard about girls who are like i just make out with my partner i was like you guys kiss like a lot and they're like yeah and i'm like man i've never had that and i wondered if it was like me and i was like oh maybe it's me like maybe i don't like making out with people but not nah, it nope nope i like it it's great <laughs> like it's great and yeah. i just i just was missing i think the right person to maybe he like do it and wanted to do it you know yeah. so maybe yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it's great first you, you want a partner who likes doing it and likes initiating and doesn't have to like think about it like um just people are built different so some people are not into it yeah i, I like it so i do it often um, but I've also noticed like some women don't want to make up all like all the time. Sometimes it'll just be a light kiss and like I'll just leave it at that because mm -hmm. like, they don't want it anymore, which is okay. But I've had a lot of partners who do, and so I like breaking out often. That's normal. Um, yeah. So I think it really just depends on the person you're with. That's I don't think that's a matter of effort actually. I think that's just a matter of like personality type and how okay. you are. I, I remember I had that. one partner who like didn't matter where we were, we might be sitting on the couch or we might be like you know whatever and she's like she would have her hand on my lap like all the time like you might and i thought that i was super sexy but that was just her thing she, she would always like doing that and i didn't even know i liked it just started doing it. i was like oh uh you know yeah. hey i didn't even know it was but that's her thing so for me it's just a, it's, it depends on who you're with and, and yeah now and I, and I was also open to it i know some guys are yes. like you shouldn't be doing this here right yeah and so it really just depends on who you're with on that end now, I want to ask you a question. Obviously, don't answer it if you're uncomfortable. But is there any, like, now that you're going through, the, like, the journey, we just had this conversation, is there, like, a thing you, like, a kink you need in your relationship? Like, you don't have to say it out loud. But, like, is there things you no. have in mind? No, really? No, 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 no. I don't need kinks. Oh. I, 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 I've done a lot of extreme stuff. I just, I don't need it. And mm. I don't care for it. It doesn't make my sex life better. What makes sex great for me what makes sex good for me is just having that kind of compatibility with the other person. You know what some I've actually been tackling with recently that I've kind of been trying to like make sense of? Mm. I've noticed, I, I can't explain why, but with some people, I am just aroused far more than with others. And it's not a matter sure. of looks. It's not a matter of um, how they carry themselves. It's not a matter of like how comfortable I am with them. I just noticed that with some people, Right off the first time we fucking, 
Mm-hmm. For some people, I'm turned on the whole time. For some people, it's like it's got to be a gradual thing. And um, I don't, uh, I don't, I, I, I started doing my research. I think it might be pheromones. I don't know if that's true. Because um, I remember reading the study about how women became turned on or they found people mm-hmm. attractive based off of body odor. Totally. The way, that they, the, the way that they set up the thing was like these women didn't know the men. Mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. and they would have different guys with different uh, i think uh, different t- dna types right uh, right i might be fucking up the science but they were essentially categorized in different dna and women found themselves attracted to the bio of men who didn't share the same genetic pool yes yeah right and i thought that was super interesting because i'm wondering if biologically speaking Maybe there's something in us that makes us attracted to certain people. Totally. No, I, okay. My last relationship, I stayed in that relationship, even though I knew we weren't too compatible if, if we stayed the people that we were, because I was addicted to how he smelled. Like, I can't even explain it to you. It made me crazy. Like Mm -hmm. anime girl, crazy. Like I needed to be in him, on him, just like in every, like he smelled so good to me. Funny enough though, I think it is the, the almost number one reason that I stayed with him for so long is that my monkey brain was just like, oh my God, must hump this person all the time. And yeah. it was so strange. But my current partner, him and I openly talk about this, how like I don't have that crazy um, obsession with the way he smells, but I love the way he smells, which is a requirement we both had of each other because, you know, we met online. And so yeah. I told him if we meet each other and we don't like how the other one smells, it's OK to end this relationship. <laughs> Okay. You know, okay. because it's a big deal. You're going to be in that person, on that person. You want to make sure that you're not – because, okay, one time I was making out with this guy and his, you know, wife was watching as, she, as wives do. And I'm making out with this guy and I he had just taken a shower, Abba. Just got out of the shower. And I stopped kissing him and I said, can I be real with you? He said, yeah. I was like, I don't like the way you smell. He goes, wait, what? I was like, I, I know it's just your normal smell. I am not attracted to it. And that was it. Yeah. We we stopped doing anything. We called it good. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, see, you're talking about smell and attraction. For me, it was fucked up. Here's what I got. So this happened was like four years ago. And mm-hmm. this is the first time I'd ever dealt with any form of erectile dysfunction. But I remember I was sleeping with the girl for the first time. And mm-hmm. like, for whatever, even though she was attractive, even though we were vibing, it was cool. Like, Whatever happened, like it was just wasn't happening, and, mm-hmm. I, and I bugged out after that because I'm like, bro, am I fucked up? Like, is something wrong with me? So I hit up my ex afterwards because I just went home, and we got up, and it just popped off right away. Oh, I'm like, so no, no, no hesitation, right? Huh. And so I'm like, okay, so the thing is not broken. It's just for whatever reason with this individual in question, it just doesn't. I don't get the same level of arousal. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I just did some like thoughts on that. And the reason why I bring it up is just like, sometimes I could really enjoy somebody and like them. And then it'll have it sometimes that like sexually speaking, it's just not there like, yes. still there or whatever, but it's like, it's not the same kind of like, I could go as long as possible. Or, like I'm always on. And, um, totally. Yeah. Totally. And, 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 I, and, and it's a bummer. It it's is a, a bummer. bummer. Because you could really get along with somebody, enjoy them, and then for whatever reasons, and I, I just enjoy sex and intimacy, so not having that really fucking blows. No, it happens. One time I was with this girl, and I was, you know, having sex with her with a strap on, and I'm I'm in there, and I this girl's hot. She's got the best titties I've ever felt in my whole life, the softest, most glorious titties I've ever had in my face. And I'm inside of her, and I'm looking at her, and I'm like, can I be real with you? She goes, yeah. I'm like, I'm just not feeling it. I don't know why I don't feel like this primal need to like take you and be with you and like she's so beautiful I want to cuddle with her I want to kiss her I want to be like sensual with her but I don't want to fuck her like I don't I don't know what that is but sometimes that's what I'm saying like sometimes I'll see a really attractive person like I was just at the airport and like I tell my partner all these things but I was like I was he's not a very like ultra alpha cowboy man or anything like that he's like a soft gamer boy like destiny and I love him right and I was at the airport and I saw these two really hot cowboys. And I was like, okay, see, these are the men my dad wants me to bring home. My mom wants me to bring home. They're like masculine and beautiful and sculptured and muscles. And I just fucking don't care. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm not attracted. Like my body doesn't do anything. But when I see a boy who like, you know, like is kind of soft, watches anime and plays d and I'm like, ding, 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 ding. I don't know what it is. I have a type. I don't know what the problem is or what the, it's so not you, a problem. It's like hobby wise and what they're into. That, like, I think it's like, want? I trust them. Maybe my subconscious knows they're going to be like more thoughtful about my feelings. Mm-hmm. Maybe. 
and maybe they're going to be nerdy and we can watch anime with our kids. And like, how cute would that be? Like my partner and I are already making a list of all the animes we want to show our kids. And I think that's right. so fun. And that's not mm. going to happen in a traditional manosphere sphere, right? Uh, so maybe it's that. Yeah. I think they're hot. I just don't want to fuck them. Or maybe, I also don't, I don't know. know. I don't know if women get the same reaction. I don't even know if it's a bad thing. I don't know if it's a me thing. You know, so um, to me, I, I don't know if it's necessarily linked to um, the hobbies or what they're into because like there's no overlap between yeah. those women who hmm. have a same thing. And so yeah, I know it's just stuff I've been thinking about lately, just because um, I've seen it a few times and I'm like, what is that? Why hmm. I, my, my my other homies and he said like, if you talk to most guys and most dudes, they'll say like there's certain women for whatever reason they would get exponentially turned on by. Like, don't get me wrong. Like you perform with all ladies, but there's some people who like, even just thinking about them, like sex wise, you just, you get turned on just by that. Yeah. With other people that you've had sex with or even date or been in a relationship, you're like, that's cool. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do you think it's know. like, I'm always looking for patterns. So I do wonder if it's like a energy thing or the way the body moves, or maybe their interest in sex. Like, okay. I look okay. This is gonna be this is gonna sound really judgmental, but I look at some girls, Pearl, and I'm like, girl, you're not even emitting sexual energy. You're not even asking to be fucked. Like, there's no part of you that seems available for fucking. So why would guys hit on you, right? Maybe certain energies are screaming at you certain things, and so you're like, oh, it's like if I with them, I know I'm gonna get this experience. Maybe, maybe it's like a maybe I don't know. I I wish it was something like that because that would be like easily explainable. But like, hmm. dudes don't even. Have, there's some women who are like ugly who don't even really like have that much sex appeal, and their dick was just like bang. And so, you know, hmm. it, it, it was a, again. This is just me speaking with some of the folks I know, so this is completely anecdotal. Mm-hmm. The reason why I went there pheromones is because like, if I'm like, if I can't find a p- pattern, and all these dudes can't really find a pattern, they can't have an explanation for why like this night at a ten was really good, but not this one. And nothing yeah. to do with hobbies or anything like that. Like, what is the thing? That's why I went to pheromones or or some that's like biological because. Um, attraction, as much as we like to believe it's about choices all the time, yeah, a lot of it I do think is purely, um, I think for in some cases, a lot of it I think is just purely uh, biology, yeah, I agree. No, I 100 like, no matter how much I might like this girl, no matter how much her hobbies are amazing, no matter how much she does the greatest dirty talking, I just is she not going to be able to reach that tier of like sexual compatibility in terms of like being yeah. able to turn on at least or whatever? No, I think you're right. Like, I think that's why my partner and I, when we got together, we said, Hey, yes, we're attracted to each other, but is that the reason we should be together? Because yeah. attraction can be deceiving. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think you're right. There's definitely a component here. Like we are like allegedly evolved animals over time. And I kind of feel like that makes sense. It makes sense that we would have pheromones and, you know, attraction based off of that, that confuses us. And oh my God, like how many people are in bad marriages because of Mm -hmm. those chemists, like that chemistry, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Bio. uh, I feel that. I wonder if I could find that. The study you mean? Yeah, it was, it was a really Mm. interesting one. Um. But yeah, I'll, I'll probably look at it and then um, I'll uh, I'll I'll do I'll send it to you when I do find okay. it. Okay. Um, but I think that pretty much covers the kink stuff that I was gonna ask you about. Like, okay, I like that you're stuff. open and curious. I think that's a really good sign in a person. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, just because I might enjoy more vanilla things doesn't mean I'm not open to. My partners can absolutely into what they like isn't that funny um, that the others the bdsmers who got bullied are now bullying the vanillas i'm like oh my god guys <laughs> what the so fuck cringe. So, so cringe, cringe. Like, <laughs> i've done, I've done I've, the, you know listen it's not in the brag but i've done like dating more than most people mm-hmm. i think and um yeah that that sexually has been probably the biggest like deceiving or just pet peeve of mine is, yeah. is people who like overestimate their, their their sexual abilities just because they've done weird shit it's like you know what it thinks me think of like when in dance when you learn dance some people they come to class like how do you do a backflip and how do you do this move and it's like bro you don't even know how to groove shut the fuck up you don't yeah, even know yeah, how to yeah. do it and you're already trying to learn how to do a moonwalk like you, you can't moonwalk at the club the whole night you get me like if you can't just bounce or do a two-step you're wasting your time with this dance class yeah and i think that's how i view a lot of people who are into kinks in a lot of ways is just some of them they just they talk like it's the end all be all or it's like the, the most important aspect like, they no, do they those, do those are exclamation points those are the emphasis those are the points of of, of like highs but it doesn't mean it's a constant it's the equivalent yeah. of like 
a drum solo. A drum solo is good because it's in the context of a song generally. Right, it's the mm. high point or the the different. It's, you just if you're just having constant drug solos your whole life, it doesn't have the same impact. Um, and so I think that's how I view a lot of this talk. At least. Yeah, I think you are. So if I looked at categories of men, I think you are far more likely to have a successful relationship just because you are so considered and thoughtful. And I think that is like the one thing missing from so many of these conversations about dating. Where like I just said this earlier in my live show, but like how can these fresh and fit guys say like there are no loyal women while well, they themselves are preaching not to be loyal? It's like very confusing for women to choose men that aren't going to be loyal. Like that's a very hard thing to to process. And so I have think you been like, watching a lot of these fresh and fit guys. Yeah, like I'm trying to um I'm not trying to get in that bubble or anything, but I had my brother come on, my farm brother, who's like pretty conservative, has four kids, all that stuff. And I wanted him to see because he's so out of the loop. Bro, he didn't know who Alex Jones was. He's like, who? And I was like, oh, like he's very in his own bubble. He makes over six figures. He's very successful, but he does not need to know what's happening on the internet. And so I brought him in to watch Fresh and Fit for the first time when Sneeko and Destiny were on. And his reaction was so funny because he's like, what is this? I was like, this is this world. This is like a whole planet where women think they're being stupid for wanting a man who's loyal. And he was just like, I'm so confused. I was like, I know. It's so great to watch it happen. Because like, again, I don't know why these like why these people think this is what joy is. But I think joy is consideration. It's loyalty. It's it's opening your options if you want to, but isn't that a form of loyalty, right? It's like talking to your partner, considering their feelings. You know, this transactional relationship thing is fine if you're arranged marriage or if you're doing what you're doing for money, but it just seems so sad to me. But I mean, maybe I'm just judgy. Um, Yeah, I think um, what they're trying to normalize is probably just a niche thing. I don't yeah, think yeah, it's yeah. Common. I don't think... You show it to most people in everyday life. Most people are just gonna roll their eyes or just keep it pushing. So for sure, I don't, I don't get too caught up in it because I'm. So like, you think you're more normal? Is that what you're saying? W which part of me? Like the part, like if people are gonna watch normal, people are gonna watch Fresh and Fit and think it's wild. Do you watch Fresh and Fit and think it's wild? I don't watch Fresh and Fit. So, but if I do watch it or if I do end up like seeing a clip, I just uh, now because I've seen so much of it, I probably just think it's kind of cringe. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, ah, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, there's a, there's a point where I took a serious amount of like heavy interest in dating dynamics and all this stuff. And I used to read up on it when it was a struggle for me as a younger man. You know, I used to watch all these podcasts and do all this stuff that like, this was like, this was like 10 years ago, 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and so at that, that time, it was probably pretty interesting for me to get into this kind of stuff. Mm. But nowadays, um, yeah. Nowadays, I, I I don't like. Sometimes people will send me like, "Oh, look, they're having a discussion about high value men." I'm like, oh, I think I'll pass. Like, I don't wanna... Okay, wait. Yeah, so I, if... I think I've seen enough of this for a lifetime. Like, I'm I think I'm good. So what do you do? So okay, wait a second. You're you're like maybe giving hope to a bunch of people right now. So you're not necessarily interested in like the dynamics and reading about it, but then you're still living. You're still dating. So what would you mm -hmm. call what you're doing now? Living. Uh, what you mean? Like, I'm confused. Like, in your everyday life, if you're not too worried about dating statistics and all this stuff, which, you know, YouTubers, we just, like, end up following it because it's, like, fun for content. But in our real lives, like, I'm just falling in love and dating nice people, and then I'm just hoping that I can share my life with someone, which I found. Yeah, listen, listen, I, mean, I mean, people on a regular page. I go on dates, like, uh, to me, like, the kind of women they describe is just not what I date, so I don't, I don't stress it. And I don't, I don't think it's most people's experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I agree. You know, so when they're talking about, like, the gold digger getting flown out to Dubai, you're like 30, 40, 50 percent of women are being flown out from colleges. Crazy. Like, oh, this is just cringe, right? This is not real life. So yeah. But if you go to Miami, it's real life. And so yeah. I don't know. I, I think there's a lot of struggle and there's a lot of issues out there for people in dating and, and folks are looking for answers. So if that's where they're gonna find it, then good for them. I just I I don't I, I don't care. Like you know, this is Everyone, I remember at one point, everybody was like, what do you think about high value man? High value man. I was like, yo, you motherfuckers are poor. Who cares? Go, go, go date like poor people. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not, that's not going to be you. That's not going to be you. Bro, I, mean, I, no. I, you... Date, I date women. Like, I date women. I've been dating women before I made money. I've been dating women after I make money. It's like, they're not, they're not yeah. out here being like, this guy got to make 70, 100, no, 300. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. How much women I date talk. So I just, I don't care. No. I don't think this is real life. I think this is a minority of people. And I think it's just this like cringe ass Twitter sphere. So yeah. Dude, I saw Aiden Ross say like, "What the average salary is like six figures, right?" And I was like, "Someone should tell our little brother it is not six figures. That is not yeah. the average salary." Yeah, they they did a video at like USC, and they were asking all the women there like, "How oh. much do you make?" 
And the one was like, uh, I remember one was at 500K. And, and then she said, is that like a lot of money? I don't know. Oh, my God. They just don't they know. They don't understand money. So they're just saying goofy shit. I, just, yeah. I, don't, I don't believe it's real. Yeah. And I don't think like if they dated a partner and you made 70 or 80K, they'd be like, get the fuck out of here. I just don't believe that. Story. Well, even a teacher, like when I was younger, dating a teacher was really like respectable. And teachers don't make that much money, bros. Yeah. so it's just yeah. like i don't know there's plenty of respectable jobs like and plus like every time people go i'm gonna date a doctor do you mean a doctor 20 years into his career or the first 10 years when he's poor like yeah. you know what i mean maybe for the investment uh, yeah. it's just, it's just like if you're a dude and you're making 70 80k and you're out here dating and you can't get dates like you're a loser it has nothing to do with you not making enough money you just don't know what the fuck you're doing you know what I'm like it has nothing to do with these women like demanding too much money these women yeah. are not looking at your profile and be like what I yeah. bet this guy makes like 60K. No, they're just not interested because you probably are a loser. Or they're like, just not into you, bro. It's not that deep. how much money these girls want. Like, they're not leaving you because you don't have enough money. Listen, any dude who talks about money this often, like how unreasonable these women's demands are, I, I, like, that's fine. You can say that there's some really delusion out there. That's fine. But that's not the reason why you're not finding partners. Mm. That's not the reason. If, you, if you've dicked down a woman well, like, they'll accept a lot. Like if you fuck a girl good, if you if you take care of emotional needs, I'm, I, women will bend over backwards. True. To, to have your life. Yeah. Hey, listen, I've, had, I've hey, listen, I've, I've seen women like if you take care of her, like they'll do anything, and yeah. they'll do it for really broke dudes as well. So absolutely, I, just, I don't buy this idea that um, like the reason why all these guys are not finding women is because if women are wanting. Dude who makes so much money. Like, I just don't I don't believe it. That, that that whole mantra is just nonsense. Yeah, I think it's they're meeting like one or two or selective women, maybe. But yeah, I couldn't even imagine. I had a really hard time dating American men because I made more money than every guy I've ever dated. And I don't know, I don't even make that much, bro. I don't even make six figures yet. Wait, when you make when you were living in Seattle or when you were living where? Ever. I've always made more money, period. Because I've worked since I was no, like, no, no, but when you were living in Seattle, you found like dudes would turn away from you because you made money? No, 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 no. But they definitely picked fights with me over it. Like, they definitely okay. were, like, um, they felt like I wasn't, like, I, like, I always made, like, let's say 20 or 30K more than my partners, or at some points oh. even more than that. And I was, like, look, it's not a big deal. I don't care if you don't make that much. And they'd be, like, but, like, you're going to care. And I'm, like, I'm literally not ever going to care as long as you, like, pull your weight. But then I ended up paying their bills or they were gaming all day and didn't want to go out. And they kept saying, it's because I don't make as much money as you. And I was, like, bro, it's because you're at home not eating dinner, not helping me clean while I'm paying your bills and you're playing video games. It has nothing to yeah. do with you making money. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, uh, listen, listen, I'm going to keep it a stack. You were dating some losers. So True. Like, I'm not gonna... as, a man, as a man, I don't True. think like, I don't think you got to be making 50, 60, 70 K. Like you're starting out, do what you got to do, but you got to be taking care of your bills. Yeah. You got to clean up after yourself. Yeah. Like, especially if your partner making more money. My Let nigga me go, tell go you. Start taking care of some home tasks. Let me tell you. More than uh, I would say the same thing if it was in reverse. So people got to do exactly. No, that's listen- nothing to do with like you making more. It's like these dudes are dude losers, and I think in, in in a sense, you kind of probably touched on on that insecurity of theirs of like in, inadequacies in life. Like if I had a girl, and I'm not in a good place in my life in terms of taking care of my shit, I know I'm not taking care of my shit. Yeah, you get me. Yeah. If I have a girl who constantly reminds me of that, like I'll just be resentful of her, but it's yeah. not her fault. That's me. Yeah. That's me. Like, like, like listen, like if I'm feeling insecure about some shit in my life, but my girl killing it. And it affects the relationship. That's on me. That's not her fault. Even though I might take it out on her, that's an issue that I got in me. So, yeah, I'm not. Look, I'm not. No one wants to be feel like they're taking being taken advantage of. Look, I'm dating again. I'm gonna marry this man, and I don't care if he works. What I care is if he's gonna be a productive part of the household. So, like, huh. he's already stepping up. Like, we're not even physically in the same place yet, and he's already stepping up. Like, he's already showing me he can have his own apartment. He has his own job. And yes, it's yeah. not as much as I make, but he's already showing me that it doesn't matter. What matters is that he's there and capable. And I'm so impressed. And I maybe it's a low bar, but I am like so grateful that he's like helping me with my health stuff. He's like really being there for my like dietitian appointments he's helping me fill out doctor paperwork he's helping me in every way he can because if he isn't going to be like a hardcore career person which i don't mind i can be but girl cannot fill out paperwork someone please help me and he's there he's doing it he's you know it's just so lovely yeah that's good that you have that that's good that you have that i think yeah um, i think most of us want that like i don't need my partner to make a bunch or do any of the stuff like i said like much like you it's just they can hold their end if they can be supportive and that's already a lot you know, yeah, you know, it is a lot. lot. Yeah. I'm really grateful. So, you know, people got to find where they can help out and then do their part to the best of their abilities rather than try to do stuff they're not capable of. And then yeah. everyone 
everyone finds a way to make it work. So yeah, I think this is probably the redefining of gender roles as men make less money and women yeah. are starting to make more. And you're going to have these kind of dynamics and relationships and people, people got to accept that. They can't just think everyone's going to mm-hmm. have the same kind of lifestyle. This exactly. Exactly. Uh, or, or it changes over time. Like right now you might be killing it. You might get banned off YouTube, God forbid. And like, yep. you got to pick up the bills for some period True. of time and you got to figure it out. Not True. Happy, you know, but most of the relationships I know, whoever makes more money fluctuates it's rarely yes. the same person all the time right so um these kinds of things um yeah these kinds of things takes time yeah you, you take time and it changes well we just talked about that because if we move to europe he can support us off his income if we move here like i can barely support us off my income yeah. so yeah like that's something we're considering because yeah, if shit hits the fan, if I get too sick, what if my lupus has me under surgery for kidney, like, because you can get kidney transplants with lupus. So what mm. if I need a kidney transplant and I can't do calls for a month? I'm fucked. So, like, I need yeah. to be in a place where his income can support us or my income yeah. can, you know, whatever. But, yeah, you're right. It's a, it's a team effort. At the end of the day, I'm on a team and we're here to make sure we win as a team. Yeah. 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 I like that. I like that. And I think, you, yeah. I think what what you're asking for is reasonable. I just think there's some people who don't want to fill in that role. So like, yeah, they're probably not compatible with you in that sense. But exactly. And that's good. Yeah. You move into um, maybe said country. Maybe, maybe it's like 80% in right now. We're like almost, they asked, so the place I rent right now, they upped my rent from 1400 to 1900 and now they want 2300. And I'm like, bros, I live in a place with one Walmart. Why? <laughs> And so I'm just like, yeah, I'm thinking about it. I'm very close. So we're going to do the paperwork. We're going to see how we feel about it. And uh, we're going to discuss it. And uh, I kind of I mean, hope. It's a, beautiful, it's a beautiful part of the world. <sighs> yes, it is. And I think the food will be yeah, better for my lupus. Out and, you know, living elsewhere will do you some good. I think so, too. I need a bubble pop. And plus, I think the food will be better for my lupus. I think the they don't even let hot Cheetos into the country because that's how awful they are for you. And I have an addiction, my friend, an addiction. <laughs> I think the quality of food is going to drastically improve. I think your access yeah. to nature and different things like that are going to improve. Yeah. Uh, I think you're going to just do very well. And also the cost of living is just so much cheaper. So I think your dollars going to take you a lot further. Totally. Traveling is going to be more accessible. You're going to be going all over that continent as much as Absolutely. you want to. Like, you know, even going go to visit your home country, maybe. Yeah. Um, that would be so dope. There's so yeah. there's yeah, there's a lot of optimism I have ahead of me. So I'm I'm kind of happy about that idea. But it's you know, until it happens, it won't happen. But when it does, I, I really hope and hey, maybe you and uh Steven and Melina can uh finally hop over and come visit. <laughs> hey, listen, listen, I'll definitely visit that place before I go visit the mountains of wherever you are right now. That's oh true. yeah, true, true, true. It's a pain to get here. So I'm like, yo, it's five hours from the airport. I said, Oh, hell no. Ain't nobody. Hell no. Home. Even me. You I'm want over me to it. take a flight? So I can lane and then take another flight to where? Nah, basically, I'm basically, I'm over it too. No, I think that would be a really nice change. I'll keep you updated because it would be nice. It would be nice to see people overseas. Okay, no worries. Listen, yeah. it was a good talk. Yeah, uh, thank you. I you. Taking the time to chat me up and help me out with that information. And then, yes, yeah, sir. We'll anytime, anytime. Have a great day. Yes, ma'am. Bye. Okay, bye. In my head, in real life while I'm dead My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool